Hi, this is David Scherer. I am back again for another session of Physics 572, Introduction to Health Physics. Uh, this is a recording on Unit 5B related to occupational do dosimetry. I recorded a session about this live last week. I'm going to record it again uh, because I have uh, the slides prepared now. It will just be more coherent. Um, leave the other video up for a while. It might be useful to someone, but eventually I'm going to be taking it down because the information is presented here, I think, in a more coherent fashion. Um, so let's move on with this. And um, um, so let's first introduce the concept of dose equivalent. Last time uh, we talked about the concept of external dosimetry and we uh, uh, cited or, or defined uh, that absorbed dose is the dose deposited per unit mass. We also learned in our lectures on radiation biology that the high LAT radiation, like alpha particles, uh, cause more damage even for the same dose, even for the same energy per unit mass. And we looked at the reasons why. But the point is that there are uh, high LAT radiation causes a certain number of cells to survive. Uh, I had a relatively low dose and low LAT radiation like photons and electrons um, uh, requires more dose to have that same fraction of cells uh, survive. Um, and so this gives rise to the concept of relative biological effectiveness. Uh, the dose uh, that produces the same effect in x-rays divided by the high particle radiation is proportional to how much more damaging the uh, high LAT radiation is. So uh, with this observation, uh, radiation protection community, the ICRP and ICRU, defined the quality factor as uh, essentially a mathematical version or a, a version equivalent to RBE. Early on, RBE was the term that was used. Find the quality factor. The quality factor is a measure that is based entirely on LAT. Uh, the you have to have the dose equivalent is a, a new dose concept. It's the physical dose times the quality factor it gives us the dose equivalent. So for photons, the, the Q factor is one. The effect, the dose equivalent is equal to the dose. For alpha particles, the Q factor is about twenty. So the dose equivalent is twenty times the the dose. Uh, in um, SI units. The units of dose are the same. The units of dose equivalent are the same as units of dose because the quality factor is just a dimensionless concept. They're in joules per kilogram. We don't use the same name. We don't call it the gray. To be clear that we're talking about this concept that's um, uh, based on this dimensionless quality factor, the unit is called the sievert. In the old days, it was called the rem. Rad was radiation absorbed dose. Rem was uh, radiation equivalent man or mammal. The point is it created that much biological damage. It was equivalent to one uh, uh, bad uh, of photon radiation. Now, sievert is just like the rad and the gray. One rem is one one hundredth of a sievert. One sievert is a hundred rem. Now, here are the quality factors as they uh, existed when they were in use uh, last time. The quality factor for x-rays and, and uh, electrons is one. Quality factor for charged particles, like heavy charged particles, like alpha um, particles was 20. Uh, neutrons of unknown energy had a quality factor of 10. And high energy protons had a quality factor of 10 as well. Um, and so it took a dose of 0.1 rem to uh, achieve this, oh, excuse me, 0.1 rads of neutrons to achieve the same dose as one rad of photon radiation. These are just the inverses of the quality factor. 
Uh, so it's, it's possible for some, not uncommon, for people to be exposed to mixed radiation fields where they have more than one radiation type. So tissue may be exposed to photons as well as uh, uh, beta, well, uh, alpha particles or neutrons that are high LAT or protons that are high LAT. Um, when you have multiple radiations uh, types that are used, then the uh, and, and also, radiations might be different for different tissues. So, for example, um, beta, uh, some particles are not as penetrating. Photons may, may uh, uh, irradiate all tissues, whereas uh, some charged particles may only go to a, a short range and may irradiate some tissues, like um, the, the skin, but not deeper tissues. So, if you think about the dose equivalent to a tissue, it's the quality factor times the dose for, of each radiation type to each tissue. So we add up all the different radiation types, multiply by the, the quality factor for that radiation type times the absorbed dose. That gives us the dose equivalent uh, to a t particular organ. Um, and so that's a concept that was used. Um, in 1927, the International Commission on Radiation Protection published report number 26 that introduced the, the concept of a tissue weighting factor. You might have anticipated it by my having a, a dose equivalent to a tissue. Um, and that was based on the recognition that different tissues have different sensitivities to stochastic injury. Um, uh, some tissues are more radiosensitive and some are less. We talked a little bit about that when we talked about acute radiation syndromes. Some tissues are more sensitive to radiation than others. And so the tissue weighting factors, the WTs, account for these differences. Um, and WTs were developed based on judgment, uh, uh, using judgment of, of experts based on epidemiological data. Um, it's not merely uh, something that's uh, uh, me me mechanical like the LET was. Um, the uh, effective dose um, is uh, the the weighting factor for each tissue times the dose equivalent to each tissue. And that's how we get the effective dose. We, uh, it's a, what the, what the, if you had a whole body dose of the effective dose, that would be equivalent to all the different tissue doses you did get. The tissue weighting factors from that first report in 1977 are shown here. And so for example, the gonads were judged to be very uh, radio sensitive. Uh, part of that concern has to, had to do with concern about future generations. Uh, the breast is relatively radio sensitive. Bone marrow, relatively radio sensitive. We talked about that with uh, the hematopoietic uh, effect. Um, other organs, but notice that all the WTs add up to one. If we add up all, and the, the remainder is all the other tissues that aren't otherwise specified. So the average dose to uh, the skin isn't specified. The dose of the skin, the dose, dose of the um, uh, spleen, the dose of uh, everything that's not mentioned here. Uh, the average of those is at 0.3. And that remainder is chosen so that the total will be 1. Now, let's suppose we have the, um, all the tissues do have the same dose. So we have a high energy external exposure where uh, high energy gamma, all the tissues in the body receive essentially the same dose front to back. Well, in that case, we have the effective dose is the WT times the uh, target tissue doses. Well, all the tissue doses are the same, we can take it out of the sum. And so then we have the, the sum of the uh, tissue fat weighting factors times the, that constant. Uh, well, the, the sum of the tissue weighting factors are one, so the effective dose is equal to that uh, uniform dose to all the tissues. So. You know, uh, weighting factors are true in every case or can be applied in every case. If you have a, a uniform external exposure, it's a very simple matter. The, the equivalent dose is equal to the external dose. Okay, um, now this concept is, has evolved over time. Uh, so I told you about the quality factor that was from the time I was uh, born until 
uh, through the, the 1977 uh, report until uh, Report 60 in 1991. Uh, in 1991, changes were made because there was a, a reassessment. Well, a lot of our knowledge of radiation biology, and in particular of stochastic effects and cancer effects, comes from the survivors of the atomic blasts of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Large cohorts have been followed for their entire lives to see what health effects occurred. Um, the radiation dosimetry was reassessed. They decided that they uh, came to the judgment that they had, the estimates of neutron dose have been wrong in the past. They, they corrected that and then used that with the observed health consequences to come up with new risk coefficients uh, for um, radiation exposure. Um, and, um, reassessment uh, led people to think, uh, place more emphasis on the risks of stochastic endpoints uh, in, in the evaluation of uh, effective dose uh, that, and um, rather than just using survival curves. And so um, the new, the, the quality factor was replaced by uh, the radiation weighting factor. They did away with the term now, you may not have noticed, but this is now equivalent dose, and before we talked about dose equivalent. So they changed the dose equivalent to equivalent dose. Equivalent dose is based on the new radiation weighting factors. Dose equivalent was based on the old quality factors. Quality factors were intent entirely dependent on LET. It was a, a function that, that um, uh, you know, a mathematical equation. Um, now, uh, Tissue weighting factors are judgments based on biological endpoints, uh, particularly about stochastic effects. Um, so um, the, here are some plots showing what the, the US NRC green uh, figure on the bottom is equivalent to the quality factor of, uh, from 1977, uh, the ICRP-60 had a table which where it said what the quality factor, what the weight, radiation weighting factor would be in different energy regions. It also gave a formula for calculating a radiation weighting factor as a continuous function of energy. That's shown by the blue, the, the table is shown by the blue histogram. The um, function is shown by the red dashed line in this graph. Um, it's much higher the way the the radiation weighting factor is much higher than the quality factor was. Um, this, this is particularly for neutrons. They reassessed the neutron exposure in Hiroshima. And then this reassessment was done again uh, uh, for ICRP 103 in the 2000s, 2006, I believe. And it changed somewhat, but the names did change then. Um, in ICRP 60, they also made some changes to the um, uh, Tissue weighting factors, they added a large number of new tissues that were, were thought to be more radiosensitive. Some of them, uh, the radiation weighting factors decreased, some of them increased. Um, because they had many more tissues, the remainder of the, the tissues became a less prominent effect. Instead of 30%, it was 5% um, in the, the 1991 version. Uh, the other thing is, when they made these changes, they changed the name again. Instead of effective dose equivalent, they now use just the name effective dose. Um, 2000s, 2007, the ICRP 103 once again changed the weighting factors. Um, they, they shuffled some of the values, only added one tissue, did not change the name. It's still the effective dose, just using uh, these. Uh, new weighting factors and the new radiation weighting factors. Okay, the effective dose is now uh, used, given by this equation, we calculate the uh, dose to the tissues. This is called the, the tissue um, equivalent dose or was, or it still is, tissue equivalent dose or radiation weighting factor times the dose to the tissue from radiation, given radiation, add all those up, we get the uh, uh, equivalent dose to the tissue, multiply by the tissue weighting factor, and add up all the different tissues, that gives us the effective dose, the symbols commonly used as E.
the unit for the effective dose is sievert, just like it was for um, dose equivalent. Uh, and uh, the basic unit is a joule per kilogram. Uh, again, this is not a measurable quantity. It relies on these uh, weighting factors that are derived based on judgment of expert. The traditional unit that, that could still be used for effective dose would be the rem. One rem, 100 rem is one sievert. One sievert is 0.01 rem. What, no, one, one rem is 0.01 sieverts and 100 rem is one sievert. Uh, this concept of effective dose is intended to be used for radiation protection purposes. Um, I think of it as something of a, a, an accounting trick, a bookkeeping trick, so that we can um, have a coherent way of uh, limiting all the different kinds of exposures at one time and, and just simply weight them so that we know how important each one is in terms of biological terms. Now, the absorbed dose, which was gray, units of gray, also joules per kilogram, no weighting, weight, no weighting factors applied. That's appropriate when we're assessing tissue reactions. The physical energy deposited in a particular tissue is what's, value, what's important to know. And the radiation type is important to know for um, uh, tissue reactions. These other factors of effective dose with all the different weighting factors are used to assess the risk of stochastic injury. Uh, as I say, I mentioned and I showed in the tables, the uh, in graphs, the weighting factors were revised again in ICRP 103, 2006. They're about due to be revised again. And there've been discussions over the last two years about the system of radiation protection and what we should do with, with regard to these things. Now, this is about occupational exposure. So let me talk about that now. Um, occupational exposure uh, implies regulatory limits. Um, now we have um, limits in the regulations uh, that are applied. Uh, these are the limits for the U US Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Um, workers whole body, whole body is defined as the head and torso. Uh, but not the lower limbs. Those are, they have a different standard. Those are extremities. The elbows and below, the knees and below are uh, the um, extremity doses. The, but the whole body, the torso and head dose, has a limit of 50 millisieverts per year or 5 rem. The skin of the whole body has a limit of 50 rem or 500 millisieverts per year. The extremities also have a risk of. Uh, uh, a radiation standard uh, limit uh, of 500 millirems or 50 rems per year. Um, so the whole body, we're worried about stochastic risks. The skin and the extremities have a smaller number of cells involved, so stochastic risk isn't the concern. It's tissue reactions. Same thing for lens of the eye. The concern there is cataract formation. Uh, the, there's a, it's a tissue reaction, and it has a a limit of 150 millisieverts or 15 rem per year. Members of the public have, have an effective dose. By the way, I noticed that the whole body dose is effective dose equivalent, uh, that weighting we talked about because the risk is stochastic. The limit for members of the public also based on stochastic risk, so it's an effective dose equivalent, is five millisieverts per year. I should mention and will mention that in addition to these limits, there is a re requirement in the rules that exposures must be kept as low as reasonably achievable. It is not sufficient surely to, merely to ensure that all of these limits are, are met. Uh, employers are also required to make sure that exposures uh, are reduced to the extent that's practicable by engineering and work practice controls. Occupational monitoring. So we have these dose limits. How do we ensure that the the dose limits are maintained uh, or, or well, they use, we, employers issue devices called dosimeters to monitor employee exposure. Um, the dosimeters, the monitoring program provides an assessment of whether you're in compliance with the standards and it's also used to assess how effective the radiation protection program is. Um, whether or not you're in compliance, the goal is to keep exposures as low as reasonably achievable also use the word ALARA as an acronym for that. So 
um, radiation monitoring programs can tell whether we need to introduce, wh whether the, the measures we're using are maintaining their effectiveness or do they need to be modified to become more effective. Uh, often, there are separate devices used for the whole body and, uh, and for the, the extremities. So workers may wear a ring to mon monitor the exposure to their uh, extremity or they uh, or some, there may there are um, eye badges that are used to monitor exposure to the, the lens of the eye. Uh, and so um, you can have multiple dosimeters to compare against the multiple standards. Now, what the requirement in the regulatory commission regulations is that a worker must be monitored if they are likely to receive 10% of the applicable regulatory limit. Many employers provide all workers who work in radiation areas with a dosimeter because it's um, uh, lab protection against liability as well. Uh, workers may develop a, a cancer and blame it on the radiation work. And it's nice to have modern results to, uh, to demonstrate whether or not that's uh, reasonable. These are what the monitoring devices, uh, different types of monitoring devices that might be used. Uh, a, a very common one is the thermoluminescent dosimeter or TLD. This is the holder. The TLD itself is a very small chip. The TLD accumulates energy uh, from ionizing radiation and then it's put into a machine that heats the, the chip up. And when it heats, uh, heat, uh, heats up, it releases the radiation that's been stored as visible light, as thermoluminescent. And so um, they measure the, the light output from the, the chip and uh, use that as an assessment of the radiation dose. Uh, film dosimetry. So we know from the very early days that uh, Rankin, uh, one of the ways he just, the way he discovered x-rays was because it fogged some uh, photographic film uh, he had in his lab. And uh, film is used as a uh, monitor, as a, as a means for measuring radiation exposure uh, because it, it fogs when it's exposed to radiation. Um, in both these cases, the emulsion, uh, the, the detector, will have filters placed with it as well. The filters are used to be able to assess the energy of the radiation uh, because darkening of the film could be due to, um, well, it, it's energy dependent or the, the TLD response is energy dependent. So by using filters, we get a sense of what the energy, of comparing the, the, the uh, exposure behind the, the two different filters tells us what the, the relative energy is because how penetrating radiation is and that helps us, helps the processor to interpret what the radiation dose would be. Um, this is an a more modern device called an optically stimulated luminescence dosimeter. Um, it is similar to the TLD device. It's a solid state device that um, stores energy from ionizing radiation, and then it's uh, placed into a machine to read only instead of being uh, stimulated by heat, like the thermal luminescent dosimeter. This is um, uh, the processor shines laser light onto the chip and it gives off uh, light of a different wavelength to indicate how much energy was, absorbed, was stored uh, from the, the ionizing radiation. Okay, um, so that's uh, uh, another kind of device. It's, it's more sensitive. It can detect the lower levels of radiation, so it's very common these days. Uh, that's why we use, I, I mentioned the filtration. The filters are used to get a sense of the um, energy of the radiation that can give us a more accurate estimate of what the exposure is. The, the, um, often the device will give us an, an indication of the fluence. We need to know, that, remember, the dose is mu en over rho times the energy fluence. So we need to uh, know what energy we're dealing with so we can know what value of mu en we should be dealing with. And that's what I have for today on the occupational exposure side. I thank you for your attention to the, the, um, the videos and uh, I wish you well.